Morning, Terry. Morning, Sherry. Kathy. Kathy. Thanks for the Kathy's joining at the same time. It's almost time to begin. Diane, there you go. I won't call everybody out, but I'm so glad to see all your beloved names in your little round circles this morning. Welcome to our Savior's Lutheran. Good morning, Terry. Welcome to our Savior's Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Jan Levake, and I'm standing here in a sanctuary that is empty, but not empty of God's Holy Spirit. I'm confident when we gather in the name of Jesus Christ, God is with us, and so gathered electronically, virtually, in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Well, here you can hear the sound of your, our baptisms, as Linda pointed out last week. Isn't that terrific? So as I always do, I have a few announcements. First of all, I have been sending out emails to you, if I have your email address, every day. Um, meant to be encouragement, meant to be conversational. If you have something to say about that, uh, please do um, let me know. If you haven't been getting those emails, let me know. I'm going to encourage people not to call the church office because I don't know if anyone will be here. Hey, Amy Jadarski and Sherry. Um, but do call me. I've got my cell phone plastered to my ear because I am so wanting to be connected with all of you. We have the ability now to meet together as communities in small or medium groups in Zoom. And we could do that for a Bible study, women's Bible study, just a chat. We tried a confirmation class and a council meeting this week. So look for that. It's not complicated. If you're not a computer person, it still will be very easy to do. Hey, Marlo and Marigold and Pete. I also have started uh, daily prayer and inviting all of you to do so at noon if that works well for you. Um, I had to set both of my phone's alarms for 11.55 because of course, how would I remember? But know that I or Jeff and I will be praying at noon each day. And if you would pray where you are at the same time, what strength and what, I'm gonna cry now, I forgot my handkerchief. Um, what strength and comfort we would get from each other. Call each other, email each other, Facebook each other. We want to be community together. Think about those, especially the elderly who might be isolated in their homes and reach out if you, if you know them and you can. I might have said this last week. I've been asked what do we do about our offerings? How will we do that? You can certainly mail your offerings in or if you go to our church's uh, web, website, there is a way to do it directly. You've set up briefly a way to do that and it'll go right into our Savior's um, account. So one of those ways would be certainly fine. Okay, prayer of the day, let's begin then. Oh, I know, that's not all. When it comes time for the prayers, um, where we normally would raise the names of people. I will pause, I will peer with my glasses at what you're going to write because if you want to have me lift someone up in prayer, let's do that today. In terms of announcements, I forgot to say that we are giving thanks that Diane Schmoody's uh, niece Rachel has returned from the Peace Corps in Peru safely. We give thanks for that. I spoke to Jim, <clears throat> excuse me, Peterson, about Jacob and he has chosen to remain in Cambodia to teach. So let's keep uh, Jacob especially in our prayers. Let us begin. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you were here, <clears throat> or you are here, I would tell you to sit down because this is a very long gospel reading this morning. If any of you, uh, if any of the kids are here and you have your orange Bibles, of course, so do I. And this is from... The Gospel of John, the ninth chapter. It actually starts in this Bible, if you're watching, Taya, on page 1183. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. 
His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but he was born blind so that God's works might be revealed to him. in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when Jesus had said this, he spat, I won't demonstrate, spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's ears. Spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, well, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, well, where is he? And he said, I I don't know. I do not know. Well, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had been born blind. Notice, no names. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he's a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight. And they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now, that now he sees nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, oops, second time, They called the man who'd been born blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was born blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you, you were born entirely in sin. Are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Well, Jesus heard that they had driven the man out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? And the man answered, well, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. 
He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ. I decided I'm going to do the children's sermon after this so that I can move my camera around a little bit. So hang on there, kids, if you're here. This man never asked Jesus for anything, did he? Did you notice that? Jesus just saw him. Walking on by, looked down, and saw the man. Jesus gave him not just one gift, but two. He gave him his sight back, but he gave him faith. He gave him trust and the knowledge that God was there right in front of him, present and caring about him. What a huge gift to know that you and, and you know, a man who was blind was a beggar and not a person of importance at all, that you matter to the Lord of the world that you are God's beloved child. Wow. Nobody else saw him. He never even referred to him by name. Not even the writer of the gospel called him by name, the man who was born blind, the kid who can't walk right, the person without a leg. I mean, it's demeaning. It's hurtful, and it makes you feel unimportant. But Jesus, Jesus saw the man no matter if he was named or not. The healing prepared him to receive the gift. It was kind of a two-part healing. You've probably heard my story. And you're like, gosh, you got to talk about her eyes again, but I'm going to talk about my eyes again. Last summer, I couldn't see well, and I couldn't see well, and I couldn't see well. And you might have noticed I kept taking off my glasses because I couldn't see well. I used to always write these sermons. Ten years a pastor, I always wrote the sermons. There was a printed out manuscript. I didn't read them, but I wrote them ahead of time. I looked down at them. I was up there in the pulpit, far away from all of you. And then one day I couldn't even see what I had written to talk about it, and I came down here. I haven't ever left. The cataracts were the mud in my eyes. That's what I think. I needed to be healed of something that wasn't, well, it was my blindness, but it was more. It was my inability to trust that God would give me a sermon even if I didn't write it out ahead of time. It was a healing for me. I'm wondering, How are we all being healed by something that's made us blind? Either actively now or something in the past. I've been noticing in this time in our life, in the time of COVID-19, where we are staying home as much as we can, where we are not, many of us, able to go to work, where some of us are working through a computer screen, where some of us are not going to work and not receiving any pay. Or some of us are in a nursing home and confined to quarters. We have a member who literally cannot leave her room. And in all of that, I'm hearing stories of kindness and help. People delivering food. Restaurants staying open that so people can receive the food, so that their workers can receive some wages for doing some work. For people taking, taking great chances to help other people. Children all over the city being fed at school sites and church sites. To 
this week I heard about stores having special early hour or separate hours for seniors so that they would not be exposed perhaps to younger people who might inadvertently unknowingly be carrying the device. I had to go to the grocery store the other day. I know, right? People, um, we, were, we were all very careful. If you wanted something and somebody was already there, you just waited. A great courtesy and love is being extended to each other. I subscribed to something called the Good News Letter. And you might think it's religious, and I guess I don't think it is. It, uh, sorry, I'm off the screen now. <laughs> but they call out stories of kindness and love in the world. And this week they had 25 good news stories found in the midst of COVID-19. Many of the kinds of stories that I told you about. One, distilleries, you know, that normally are making alcohol, but the bars are not open and had not as many orders. And they said, wait a minute, we could make um, hand sanitizer and we could give it out for free. They are. That's one I thought was really extraordinary. There was a landlord in Maine saying he wouldn't collect rent due to the coronavirus outbreak. But the one that really touched my heart this week came from China. China donates 1,000 respirators, ventilators, the breathing machines for people who are, have the most serious form of the COVID-19 um, illness. Two million medical masks, 20,000 medical suits, and 50,000 COVID-19 test kits to Italy. Why Italy? Because when the outbreak occurred in China, Italy sent help right away. So China is returning with thanks what they can do to help Italy. And they are prioritizing all Italian orders for respirators in their factories without being asked, just like Jesus just like Jesus. I think that people are really seeing each other in this time of crisis, seeing need, seeing all people as being worthy of care and help. And if you ask me, that comes from God. All of it comes from God. That's where love for neighbor comes from. Friends, we're all from God. And we all unasked receive the benefit of God's love and grace and mercy and forgiveness. And did I mention love already? And it comes from the Holy Spirit that we receive in our baptisms, a gift each and every day, a gift that cannot be taken away from us. Now here I used to be able to say, and we also receive it each and every time we come to the table for the meal, very difficult not to be taking Holy Communion in this time. But the gift of the Spirit, the gift of God's gifts through baptism are still there. I read this week that baptism is also sometimes called enlightenment, meaning that the light of the world comes into our lives when we are baptized, and though we may not always know it or acknowledge it or feel it, we are not left alone because of what God does for all of us. The way that we are seen by our Lord is extraordinary, unasked for. So we do plead and beg for signs of that now and filled with grace. So we are in this whole world all together, all the same in these hard times. We are all beloved children of God. We are all sisters and brothers in Christ. Even the ones who aren't certain that they are. So my prayer is for God to continue to sling holy mud in our eyes, to take away the blindness that we often have so that we can trust and believe that we are, I can't see my hands, that Jesus is reaching for us and offering that life revealing and love revealing mud in our eyes. I pray that God continues to show us to each other, especially as we pray and ask for that, to really see each other.
Because when we ask God, you know, show me the ones that I need to help today. Show me what, show me what I should do and who I should do it for, even remotely. What I think we're going to find is that God is going to show the people who are exactly like us, not perfect, but loved perfectly by the God who loves us all. Thanks be to God. Amen. As I pray, each time I say, Lord, in your mercy, of course, your response is, hear my prayer. And when I come to the time where um, we ask for names, I will look closely and name those out. Um, or you might also name those as you see them on the screen that you can pray for these people. Let us pray. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of insight, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of love, grace, compassion, forgiveness, mercy, and love. Help us to remain connected to each other through your threads of love through the Holy Spirit. Be with those isolated and quarantined. We pray for the health and safety of any missionary who has remained in their country, especially Jacob in Cambodia. Lord, in your mercy. God of insight, your creation moves on in season. We pray for mild weather so that those who are homeless and unable to be sheltered indoors might be safer and warmer. And we pray for farmers in the whole world, working with honor and integrity to continue to feed the world. Lord, in your mercy. God of insight, bring, bring peace to all people and nations. Guide our leaders to seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all. Give strength, encouragement, and insight to our public health scientists, physicians, workers, and decision makers. Give energy and, and, and equipment to hospitals and their dedicated employees. In the miracle of loaves and fishes, provide enough supplies to keep them all safe. We pray specifically for our president, Donald Trump, for good, for guidance and decision making. We pray for our governor, Tony Evers, and all of our elected officials. Protect and guide our military safe, our public safety officers, especially Justin, BJ, Wyatt, Jace, and Dave, and our military, especially those who are deployed far away. Pastor Clay and his unit in the Ukraine, Alex, Cole, and all. Lord, in your mercy. God of insight, you care for our needs even when even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer and healing this day. We pray for Jackie in her upcoming surgeries and for all who are ill or healing, especially those whom we now name before you. This is where you guys can tell me. Especially pray for the health and well-being of the children of our congregation, our community, and our world. I pray for anyone who is at high risk. I pray for those who don't know if they've been exposed and worry. I pray for those who are hospitalized on ventilators and for their families. Accomplish healing through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, nutritionists, and all who tend to human beings. Lord, in your mercy. God of insight, help this assembly who, while not in this building, are nonetheless connected to each other in prayer and spirit. Lift up the unique gifts of each person who enters, no matter their physical capacity or need. 
Help us to be creative in reaching out to each other in ways that don't involve air or touch, but nonetheless, our spirits. Lord, in your mercy. God of insight, you call out to those who have died and you awaken them to a new life with you. We give thanks to your saints. We pray for all who grieve the loss of a beloved one to COVID-19 or any other illness. Join us together with them as your children in this world and the next. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wherever we are, Lord, surrounded by people or alone, stay with us as we try to endure patiently, as we try to worry and wait, persist and prepare for ourselves and our children and our families. In place of our anxiety, give us peace. And according to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is often a time in the service where I say, are there any other announcements for the good of the community? And I sometimes think maybe we should just all chat now and have a cup of coffee, except I haven't had time to make mine yet. I know, right? I know, right? I'd like to leave you with a blessing. Oh, I'd like to leave you first by telling you that um, a quote that I read this week that... Uh, really warmed my heart. Uh, Nadia Boltz Weber, who is a edgy and very faithful Lutheran, uh, ELCA Lutheran pastor, wrote in her newsletter this week that um, she believes that the opposite of fear is love. And I think that's something that we can take heart to heart this week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. This is the prayer I'm going to put for all of us here on the cross since you can't all come along with yourself today. The service is over as we walk out and greet each other. Anybody got anything to say? We're live, you know. Okay, I will um, do a children's sermon next that will go on our, on our Sunday School Facebook page. And then I will be moving um, this, this video over to the uh, website for anyone, well, not you guys because you're watching, but for anyone else who would need it. So please know you're in my hearts and my daily prayers, and I cannot wait. Well, I have to wait. We cannot wait. We hope, live in hope for the time when we can be together in, in, a, in this sanctuary and community again. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.